Hello, friends. Welcome back to the Strong Stoic Podcast. I am your host, Brandon Tumlin. There's a popular song going around. It's been going around for a while. Uh, it's used frequently as background music for some emotional TikTok videos or Instagram reels. And sometimes I find myself looking up those songs because when you hear a philosophical idea with some background music, I always get interested in what the what the song itself is about and if it aligns with the philosophical message. Because sometimes you get alignment between those two. And music is a strange thing, right? Because it seems to speak directly to your spirit in a sense. Uh, and anyways, this one song, it's called Oceans. And there's a very beautiful bridge in it. And I've spent a lot of time thinking about the lyrics in this song. Uh, m- months, in fact. Pretty much every episode I do, I've, it's, it's been a few months that I've been thinking about it. Or at least, at least a few weeks. And so I'd like to dissect the lessons here. Because it touches the heart of many philosophical ideas. And so I really think it's worth breaking down. I'm going to explain it before I read the lyrics, of course. And I, I do want to say, too, that... I wasn't really planning on this particular episode to be this deep, but I actually think that this is probably the the deepest I've ever went with a topic. And again, I didn't really try that. That's kind of just how the episode came out when I was thinking about how I can actually explain this song. So prepare thyself for a very deep episode, probably the deepest I've ever done, which for long, uh, long term fans of the strong stoic would know that that's that's a statement because I, I tend to get pretty deep into some of this stuff but this one is definitely up there uh before i get into that uh this podcast is part of the wall garden podcast network so check out the wall for more i'm a director there and a contributor as well the strong stoic is part of that network also big thanks to my supporters on patreon you get early access there to the podcast episodes and if you want to uh, support me there, uh, it is not expected, but it's deeply, deeply appreciated. Thanks to those who are, are who are already doing that. Also, consider joining my Telegram group chat. That is growing slowly. It's very still a very small percentage of people on there, but it's it's sort of growing into a bit of a community on there. Uh, there's a lot of discussion on there with the podcast ideas and people are sharing their personal journeys with stoicism. So it's just, it's really great for me to see. And it's really the way that I'm trying to get to know my audience more. In fact, I'm going to be doing some, some live group chats with people that are in that group. So if you want to actually meet me and, and tell me your story, please, Telegram is the way to do that. Finally, my articles you can find on Medium and the Stoic Gym magazine. First, I want to talk about the well the first word in this podcast episode which is spirit this has a particular connotation and and notion in christian philosophy for sure it's often called the holy spirit and a lot of people misinterpret this as something up in the clouds Uh, christianity goes through a lot of this but really what the christians mean by this particular element of christianity the holy spirit it's something a more it's something more akin to the stoic god It's really the touch of divinity that's within each of us. It's what gives us the potential to do good, essentially. An analogy I've used to describe the Stoic God in the past, it's something like the Force in Star Wars. It it dwells in each of us. It connects all of us. It's living in a sense. God is everything. God is nature. And that's pretty much what the Stoic God is, which is really, again, what the Holy Spirit is in Christianity. They're very similar ideas. In fact, you, you could argue that they're traced back to be the same idea. And because you exist uh, as a human being, you share in that divinity. You share in that spirit. So God is everything. The Stoic God is everything that exists, period. It's all of nature. And you are a part of nature, so you are a part of God. You share in that divinity. You have that divine spark. So, one can actually think about the Spirit, i.e. the Holy Spirit, in very scientific terms. Like, there's no voodoo stuff about this. Of course, in Christianity, it does carry the notion that this Spirit is what connects you to a supernatural God. So, there is a bit of, uh, you know, supernatural elements to that as well. But if we think about just the Holy Spirit, which is really the Spirit in the Stoic sense, it's a very rational idea you see, the universe is made up of atoms when you break everything down, right? If you were to break your body down into elements, which eventually, of course, unfortunately, it will be, um, basically what you get are atoms. And we, too, are made up of the same 
atoms as everything else. So this isn't like, again, voodoo stuff. This is true. It's really true that we are, we share a, a place in the cosmos with everything around us. I'm going to read you this quote by Neil deGrasse Tyson, which is beautiful. When I look at the universe, I feel quite large. We are a participant in the great cosmic search for truth. That's when you learn. That's when you see. That's when you know that we are not just in the universe, but the universe is in us. And that fact alone makes me feel big. So that's a very interesting idea because, I mean, he's a scientist. He's looking at this from the perspective of, well, the stars that you see in the sky at night our atoms are the same atoms that come from those stars. We are literally star made of stardust. It's the same atoms. It all started from the Big Bang. So if you think about this very scientifically, it's not something crazy to say that the universe is in each of us and that we are a part of the universe. This is scientifically true. So it, it it's also the case that Everything we do has an effect on the world around us. And that's another part of what this means to be divine. When we share a, a piece of the cosmic structure, really what that means is that, well, we play a role. And when we play a role, it means everything we do and everything we don't do has an effect on the world around us. Not just other people, everything, period. And those two facts, the fact that we share atoms with the entire universe, we share in cosmic material and the fact that our actions do actually affect the cosmos including everything that is in the cosmos those two facts explain really what is meant by the spirit at least in the stoic sense and again that idea is very similar in christianity now the point i want to make clear about this little rant is that we're often scared of some of these religious terms spirit for example holy spirit and perhaps there's reason to be suspicious about that but in the stoic view of the world there's absolutely nothing unscientific about that. So that's the main point I want to make. Now, what that spirit leads you to do is in a simple phrase. Make the world a better place. If you were to think about the purpose that we share in the divine, that we share in the cosmic structure, what is the point of that? The point is to make the world a better place. That's certainly the notion in Stoicism. We are all a part of the cosmos. And the way for us to flourish as individuals is to recognize that and act in a way that is aligned with the cosmos, which is that of good. Meaning, the goal of the cosmos is to produce good. And again, this isn't voodoo stuff. If you think about the history of the universe as we know it, it's all led up to humanity. Now that's really started with the Big Bang, right? So from the Big Bang, following evolution from single-celled organisms to multi-celled organisms to animals to mammals to the development of the rational mind that we all share, which the Stoics will call the divine mind, and guess what? Consciousness, that gives us the capacity to actually be good. Because without consciousness... We aren't good or evil. We just are. The universe has conspired to create good in the world. If you accept the notion that consciousness grants us the potential to be good or evil, meaning if you don't have consciousness, if you're not aware of your actions, you can't really be good or evil because there's no morality involved. You can only do a good act or an evil act when you know, when you're not ignorant, when you know good from bad. So if consciousness grants humanity the potential to be good or evil, and you accept the naturalistic arguments of evolution, meaning that's all a natural process that happened over millions and millions of years, then you accept that the cosmos has been working for millions of years to create good in the world. And you as a human being represent that good because you have consciousness, because you have a rational brain, a divine brain, because it is the creation of the universe. And so it is your divine duty 
to live according to nature, to live according to the cosmos that brought you into fruition, and to produce good in the world. Because the cosmos produced good in the world. So how the hell do we do that? What do we do? We do that by figuring out exactly what living according to nature means. That's the whole Stoic doctrine. That means living according to Mother Nature, which is, again, the cosmos, reality itself. Live according to human nature, which is our shared psychology predominantly. And live according to your personal nature. Who exactly are you and what should you do given your individuality? So for us to live according to nature, we have to figure out what the hell all of that that I just mentioned, what the hell does that mean? Certainly we can't live according to nature if we don't know what that means. But if you think about everything I mentioned there, mother nature, human psychology, your personal nature, who you are, what is that? Well, that's truth. In other words, we have to seek truth. What is the cosmos? What is objective reality? What is human nature? Who am I? What is my personality? What do I like? What do I not like? What has a good chance of making me virtuous? What does not? These are all questions that science, and certainly your own, let's say, reflective nature, aims to answer. Who are you? Well, that's a question for you to figure out in your life. That's what wisdom is. Wisdom is know thyself. Now we can name all of that that I just mentioned. Everything. And I know there's a lot here. This is a dense episode again. But you can put a single name on all of that that I just mentioned. The vast unknown. Chaos. Meaning, if we are seeking truth, That means that there is truth that we do not know. In other words, it is unknown. In other words, it is chaos. Not anarchy. No. Chaos. The vast unknown. Feminine energy. To live according to nature means to seek truth. And we can only seek truth when we know truth. And how do we... No truth. Well, we go out into the vast unknown. We go out into the areas that we have no idea what we're looking at or talking about or thinking about. Guess what? Because we don't know it. And we try and figure it the hell out. What does all this mean? Now, often in mythology, the vast unknown is represented by oceans. Ever since human beings have been living next to the ocean, we've considered it to represent the vast unknown. Now, this is a symbolic representation. Because when you look at the ocean, you have no idea what's under there. And we have some idea today, generally speaking, what's under there. But there's still much that we don't know. And even if we do know, let's say hypothetically, what's under there, we still can't really see it. If we're standing on the shore... You don't know what's happening under the ocean. There could be a shark under there. That's what scares people about swimming because, well, damn it, who the hell knows? Even if you're swimming in a lake sometimes, people get afraid that there's a shark there because, well, you just don't know. I mean, you kind of do. If it's fresh water, they can't survive. But you really, hey, maybe it's a Loch Ness Monster. You, know, you, you really don't know. So this idea of symbolically representing chaos as the ocean, the vast unknown, That's as old as recorded history. Possibly it's as old as the human race. So let's add that to the equation that I just mentioned earlier. For us to live according to nature, we must seek truth, meaning we must figure out what it means to live according to nature, and we do that by going out into the vast unknown, which is symbolically represented as the ocean. And so you could say that in order for us to seek truth, we must... Walk on water. Now that obviously brings up the image of Christ. Walking on water. And who was Christ? Well, Christ was God. He was the Son of God, both at the same time. He walked on water. He walked on chaos. He walked on the vast unknown. And there's a final piece to this puzzle. 
before I bring it all together, which is the most important for you. What do you do? You. Meaning, okay, great. So it's our duty to live according to nature. It's our duty to seek truth as a part of that because for us to live according to nature, we have to know what that means. So what do I do as an individual? Remember, live according to nature means... One part of it is live according to your personal nature. Now, what is that? Well, that's your personality. Are you introverted? Are you extroverted? Are you creative? Are you conscientious? But also, your interests. What are you interested in? What do you like? What do you want to do? You hear this advice given to young kids all the time. Hey, whatever you do for work, you make sure you like it. What does that mean? It's like, listen, you probably have something to offer to the world. And a great way to know what that is, is what you find interesting. Now, it's not always the case. You can be interested in playing video games, and some people make money at that, but the vast majority of people don't. You can certainly be interested in smoking weed all day and staying on the couch and never working. And people do that. So, this isn't... There's some interests that aren't so good for the world. However... What interests you in terms of what you find deeply, deeply meaningful, not superficial, like playing video games, not superficial, like smoking weed and sleeping on the couch all day. No, no, no. What is deeply interesting to you? What calls you? You could say, what calls you? Interest, genuine, sincere, meaningful interest is a really weird thing because you can't control it. Anyone that's had a favorite show that has tried to get their partner to watch it and like it knows that. You can sit down with your partner and say, listen, babe, this is my favorite movie. I want you to watch this with me and enjoy it. And they just can't. We can't choose to be interested in something. You can choose to be curious or at least give it a chance, but you can't really choose to be interested in something. Now that's crazy. Isn't that crazy? Some things we're interested in, other things we are not. And we can't control that. So it really begs the question, if you can't choose your interests, what the hell is choosing it? That's a question that I won't attempt to answer today. This episode is dense enough. But whether you like it or not, you are called into your interests. You don't decide it, you get called into it. It could be a particular job, engineering, a lawyer, a bartender. It could be a hobby, basketball, knitting, gardening. It could be your selection of friends. Who do you find interesting? Who do you find intriguing? And so to live according to your personal nature, it means to honor that. In one simple phrase, be yourself. Do what you like. Honor your individuality. Do what calls you. Do what's worth the damn suffering. I think it's time, dear friends, to read what I've spent the last 20 minutes trying to do the back work for. Here's the bridge. Spirit lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the water wherever you would call me. Sometimes we lose faith in life. We're not sure if we're on the right path. We're not sure if we're doing the right thing, if we're honoring living according to nature. When you feel that, when you feel a little lost, like maybe you're swaying a little bit in the wind, Ask yourself this question, am I honoring who I am? Not who the world tells you that you should be. Not who you were five years ago, necessarily. But who are you? Are you honoring that call? Are you honoring your interests? Are you honoring your personality, your strengths, accounting for your weaknesses? Are you being you? Are you being genuine? Are you living in accordance with your own nature? And if you're doing that, 
If you're doing that, you're naturally going to be seeking truth. You're naturally going to be going out into the vast unknown and walking upon the water. And when you're doing that in a way that connects you to the cosmos, in other words, to the spirit, well, that is what I would call living in harmony. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please consider leaving a rating and review wherever you're listening to this. Join me on Telegram, Instagram, Twitter, all the social medias. If you're new here, episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. Would love to see you again on the Telegram group chat. Come say hi. Thanks again. Cheers. Until next time.